and say we're trying to synthesize this. trying to do this synthesis. So I'm going to label this alpha carbon. And now let's try to label who's the alpha carbon over here. Well, I think it's pretty plain that this is the alpha carbon over here. That means who's the R group that we're trying to add? Well, this is the R group. Let's put in some numbers here. 1, 2, and 3. This 1, 2, and 3 is the R group that we're trying to add. It doesn't exist in our starting material. That's correct. Uh, I guess uh, as I'll call these, uh, I don't know, 4, 5, and 6. Everyone will get a number. So this will be 4 and 5. The 4 and the 5 already exist, and the alpha carbon already exist. But what we have to add is the 1, 2, and 3. I'm not going to bother giving this a number because I just labeled it alpha. So we need to see how to go from here to here. Well, one thing we're going to have to do is eventually blast off this number 6. Well, we know how to do that by a hydrolysis and then decarboxylation. But first, we need to add this chain over here. So how can we do that? Well, let's draw the mechanism and the product from these reagents. How do you think that this would react with this? Let's describe that in words first. How do you think these reagents would react with this? It would uh, deprotonate the alpha carbon, uh, uh, hydrogen from the alpha, car alpha carbon. So let's show that mechanism and that product. Now, there's another alpha carbon here. We have to figure out why, we, why is it better to deprotonate the middle alpha carbon and not the left alpha carbon. So give that some thought. You were right that it's better to, de to deprotonate this one, but why would that be preferred? Because uh, the negative charge can there's resonance structures that put the negative charge on either of the oxygens. Oh, very good. That's, the, that's why 1,3 dicarbonyls are special because the alpha carbon between them is even more acidic than usual. So if you have more than one alpha carbon, you certainly want to deprotonate the one that will be more stabilized by resonance. So we're not going to worry about deprotonating this. This has two extra resonance forms, one resonance structure where the negative charge could be on this oxygen, and one resonance structure where the negative charge could be on this oxygen. All right, now is this a nucleophile now or an electrophile? Okay, and now all we need to do is make this chain of carbons into a electrophile, and then it can get attacked. So here's the hard part for students. I need to come up with a molecule that includes this fragment that can get attacked by this. Well, I want to attack, I'm just copying the fragment, one, two, and three. Now in the product, carbon one is attached to the alpha carbon. But this bond hasn't been formed yet. So I need to attach something else to the number one carbon. I need to say what the number one carbon was attached to before the alpha carbon attached it. I need to put something here that will make this into an electrophile. So what could I put attached to the number one carbon? This is actually a pretty simple reaction. What could I attach here that would allow this to attack this? carbon. We could put a carbonyl, but then when it attacked, well, actually that wouldn't work. If I put a carbonyl here, then the alpha carbon would attack the carbonyl, but we wanted to attack the number one. I need to put something on the number one that would make the alpha carbon attack the number one, because this is the bond we want to form between the alpha carbon and the number one. Well, I can just go ahead and put a halogen here. 
what type of reaction now can happen between these two? Yeah, you just do a normal SN2. I think maybe we've seen previously that enolates can do SN2 reactions. Uh, and that's a good way to form new carbon-carbon bonds. Since this is a synthesis, I can make up any starting material I like. All right. Okay. Um, so in order to get the number one attacked here, I can just make it like this. So this is, again, the step that you really need to highlight. This is the step that is hard, really hard for people to come up with a molecule that will deliver the fragment that they need. So the things that were helpful here were numbering, and I think putting in this squiggle. This is the bond that only exists in the product. So there has to be someone else bonded to the number one in the starting material. And we can put anyone who it would help us to get this box. Let's show the mechanism and the product for the next step. Or for the step that we just have on the board. Very good. Now this is what you drew, except I tried to draw this to look more like the product that we're trying to get. And I've shifted this ester group down here, even though we still have the same connectivity. This is the number six carbon, I guess. In fact, maybe I should already have started drawing that like this in this picture. Maybe I should already have shifted the ester group down here to try to show that I need to put someone up in this horizontal position, just as a thought step. Okay, and now we've got, so again, now we've formed the bond we needed to form. So this is the step that's really hard for people to come up with this uh, fragment here. Now what do we need to do finally in order to make this look like this? Uh, a decarboxylation. So what do we, we, we have to, first of all, we have to do hydrolysis. Right. We need to do a hydrolysis and then uh, decarboxylation. I think I might have still left some. No. no. That's good. So, um, and again, I, it seems like it would be simplest to do an acid-catalyzed hydrolysis, but again, for some reason, your instructor keeps doing a base-catalyzed hydrolysis. So your instructor here would do a base-catalyzed hydrolysis. And then they still have to add acid anyway to get the protonated form. And then they have the heat. And that would take us to here, because uh, this is gonna turn this into a carboxylic acid, and then when it decarboxylates, decarboxylates, it'll be gone. So it seems like you could just do this step by itself, but they keep doing the base catalyzed hydrolysis first. Even if you do the base catalyzed hydrolysis, you still need to add acid so that you have a carboxylic acid and not a carboxylate. So anyway, this is how they did it. Okay. Well, what we just did is reviewed this idea over here. We showed how to go from this starting material to this picture. Okay. And basically what we've showed is we already knew that we could blast off this ester group by hydrolysis and then decarboxylation. But now we've shown that before we do that, we can add an extra carbon chain to this alpha carbon over here. So what we're doing here is basically we're making substituted acetone. Substituted acetone. This is what acetone looks like, right? And now we're adding an extra uh, substituent to this carbon over here. So we can kind of think of this as a substituted acetone. So the acetoacetic ester synthesis is a way to kind of make it a substituted acetone in a sense. In a sense. You gotta add the carbon chain before you do the decarboxylation, because the reason that it was so easy to use this as a nucleophile was because it was a 1,3 dicarbonyl. So first we add the carbon chain, and then we do the decarboxylation. Now, notice in this picture, yes. if we wanted to, we could add two carbon chains to the alpha carbon. If we want to, we can add two carbon chains to the alpha carbon by just repeating these steps. Notice what we did here. We made an enolate, and then we did an SN2. Well, if we wanted to, we could make this into an enolate, mm -hmm. and then do another SN2, okay. right? Um, because this still has a hydrogen. As long as we still have alpha hydrogens, we can keep making enolates. So we have the potential here to actually add two carbon chains, not just one. 
And that's something that you might see uh, that you have to do as well. 